All right, now we're approaching the final steps in to standing up our data mart for our onboarding slash tutorial implementation of Alex Engineering and DBT. So from the summary document, I'm just going to go into the mart reporting and then in this video, go to the three different steps or three different considerations into finalizing the data tables or data models for data mart. And then after we're going to go into some other related features that DBT offers, <clears throat> which I'll talk about later. So let's get started. So we're going to create fact tables and, and dimension tables for our data model, data models for our data mart. But what are facts? Um, the next steps are creating the fact and dimension tables for reporting. These types of tables are created from the Kimball methodology and our analytic engineering process. And the following are some things to consider in this implementation. Um, dimension fact materialization, the very thing we're talking about here is fact. And embedding the business logic in, uh, as well. And then also just having aggregations of data in, in the data mark respectively for fact tables. And at a high level, what dimension fact tables are per chemo methodology. A fact table contains the numeric measures produced by an operational measurement event in the real world. As lowest grain, a fact table real code responds to a measurement event and vice versa. And why I like to think of it is not attributes and related transactional related items. Like for example, if I'm going to give someone um money that is a particular transaction and then if they give me a receipt there can be an event associated for that transaction respectively for the cashier or whomever would be on the other side of the cash register um so that's that and then dimensions are like more attribute related information particularly dimensions provide the who what where when why and how context surrounding the business process event that's mentioned. So the cashier's probably his name is Ben. It's probably a cashier name's table. And then me being a customer, the probably be a customer's table with some particular information related to me. And that'd be like dimension related information. Dimension tables contain the descriptive attributes used by the applications for filtering and grouping the facts or event information. With the grain of the fact table firmly in mind, all possible dimensions can be identified. And the following are example dbt commands to create the particular tables. So here we got dbt dash dash models mart dot dim dot star. What this means is in the mart folder dimension folder, execute all SQL queries within that particular subfolder. And then respectively for the fact table, or excuse me, fact take queries to materialize the tables, we go into the marked folder, fact subfolder, and implement everything in there through the DBT run. And let's go see what those queries are in particular. So going from the stage Folder. We're going to go to the Mart folder, but just before that, just notice in your DBT project YAML file, the materialization of these models are specified explicitly here. And if they aren't, then when running that DBT run command, you want to keep in mind, like if there's an issue error were to occur, even though you're trying to materialize these tables in these folders, there's a reason why. It's that the lack of specification and the dbt underscore project .yaml file. Okay. So we have that. And then now let's go into this marked folder and then dimension cell folder and check some things out. So here we have a customer dimension information. There's no transformations needed. So it's just a straight query to materialize this. And now after we go into the household demographics dimensional query, and then we do a materialization quickly from the staging table, the perspective staging table, stage household demographics as well. The reason why we have this right here is because we're referencing that query or table that is 
hypothetically, if it were to materialize in our cloud database. And let's respectfully show what that would look like, again, as like a quick reminder, what these um, translation of these templates are in dbt. This is where dbt uses Jinja, which is mentioned later on in a later section. So let's go to our target, compiled, models, mark, dimension, and what query we're looking at. Household demographic stem, cool. And so this is what the query would actually look like in materializing the particular table. And that, hmm, that graph earlier on that we saw, it's this. It's referring this particular table, but it's with its associated uh, database and schema, and we're using Snowflake as the designation for it this particular um, um, drill down in the database. So just keep that in mind. Let's get out of the target folder. No, I do not want to save that. And then let's go into the fact layer. Let's go to something a little bit more juicy, I would say. And so we have like a bunch of other information as well, like aggregations in our fact layer. And let's just look at a couple more things. Um, some feature engineering. Here we're doing the net amount, but in British pounds, and then also another quantif uh, quant uh, feature, engineering, feature engineering quantification, uh, uh, which is through the net amount, and then we're doing it per order unit in British pounds as well. And then here we're doing another aggregation. And then why am I doing these things in particular in this fact subfolder in our data mo model on our it's just because um, coming up, we're embedding some business logic, and this is like the great stuff. Um, and going through an implementation of, okay, we've done all the data cleaning, abstracting that away into like different layers, and now it's just focused on the core business logic, which is in the final stages of our data mart, which is in the marts table, or marts folder, excuse me. And so your business, say, for example, your business stakeholder, what we just saw, wants a currency conversion, right? And then they want to buy specific calculations like this and respectively like this as well through the net amount in British pounds um, per like unit as well, unit price. Um, as two additional columns in the catalog sales reporting. And then again, like how do we go about that? You know, we just saw that. Well, we, get, um, we go to the business individual, so get some specifications like, okay, for your conversion, do you want that like in a static form of one particular data reference or do you want like a external table reference for the latest um, conversion quantity amount? They were like, oh, I'm just kidding, just like this amount, particularly this conversion, and then we'll update it monthly. And you're like, okay, cool. And you just get a little bit more specifications, maybe on naming conventions, things of that nature. and you do the logic um, embedding in the particular query to materialize your table for the reporting based off what the business user wanted in the particular table. So let's go back. That was, so that was right here. Cool. So we get that staging view, right? And then we do another common tables expression or CTE and getting everything, all the columns from that previous CTE, and then adding in two more columns as well for the business reporting that the user or business user wanted. And the materialization thereafter will be through the execution of a dbt run and voila, you would have like one table um, or an updated table um, where it allows you to have the existing information plus the business stakeholders um, required needs as well. Maybe they want to do like an aggregation uh, as well. Maybe they're facing some particular issues in their BI reporting tool. So how do we go about mitigating that? And there's ways to go about that through aggregations or like overall summaries to get that quickie um, snappy reporting because with an aggregation, particularly how you do it, it makes the everything in the table consolidated for business reporting to get a little bit more uh, flexibility and decrease latency for said reporting, depending on your BI tool or um, business information. Okay, and then maybe you also want to like avoid 
PII or personal identifiable, identifiable information as well. If you want to like summarize the table as well, you can mask particular cons as well, but it's depending on the cloud data warehouse and what features that offers there for PII, as I mentioned. And so to run everything in the Mart folder, which is right here, dbt run dash dash model or models Mart dot star. And then if you wanted to do the subfolders or particular tables as well, we could do like run dbt run dash dash models mart dot dim dot star or we can actually specify the particular table as well. In the following you'll see the dbt commands with respect to the materialization for everything that's mentioned. So let's check that out now. See dbt run dash dash models mart dot all and hopefully everything will be created in that dbt run execution. And what's cool is if something errors out and something else can be continued, assuming that there's no dependency on the error table, um, other things can run as well. So basically there's no quick fail unless specified depending on your TB dbt version. I believe dbt 0.17 allows for quick fails. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, so congrats, now <laughs> you know how to materialize tables, or hopefully know how to materialize tables through this overview that I just went through. However, there's so much more to dbt that we have not covered. Um, so let's just go dive quickly into those things. And those things would be documentation, testing, and advanced templating. templating. Cool. And so yeah, thank you for watching this video. I'm looking forward to seeing you in next video.